Hi, third graders. Welcome to Lesson 16, Judy Moody Saves the World by Megan McDonald and illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. The genre of this story is humorous fiction. Humorous fiction is a funny, imaginative story that may be realistic or unrealistic. As we read, we want to be looking for story events that are intended to be funny, characters who behave in humorous ways, and a plot with a beginning, a middle, and an ending. Let's meet our author, Megan McDonald. Once, while Megan McDonald was visiting a school, some students asked her, are you ever in a bad mood? This got her thinking about creating a character with lots of different moods. Judy Moody was born. Many of Judy Moody's adventures actually happened to McDonald when she was a child. Let's meet our illustrator, Peter H. Reynolds. Peter Reynolds and his twin brother started writing their own books when they were about seven. Reynolds has been drawing and telling stories ever since. After illustrating more than seven Judy Moody books, he feels like Judy Moody's family is part of his own family. As we read, we want to be thinking about our essential question, why is it important to take care of our environment? One thing to take note of also as we read is that what we're going to be reading is not the entire book of Judy Moody Saves the World. What we're going to be reading is called an excerpt or a part of the whole book. So we're just going to be looking at a few chapters from the book, Judy Moody Saves the World. So if you would like to read the rest of that book on your own, make sure and ask your teacher or librarian if they happen to have a copy for you. Batty for banana peels. Science, everybody, said Mr. Todd. Let's continue our discussion of the environment. Rainforests everywhere are being cut down. When you take medicine or bounce a ball or pop a balloon, you're using something that came from the rainforest. And right here at home, malls are replacing trees, animals are disappearing, and we're running out of places to put all of our trash. Today, let's come up with ways we can help save the earth. Sometimes it's good to start small. Think of ways we can help at home, in our own families, and at school. Any ideas? Don't leave lights on, said Haley. Recycle your homework, said Frank. And cans and bottles and stuff, said Leo. Turn garbage into dirt, said Rocky. Yes, said Mr. Todd. That's called composting. Judy raised her hand, knocking her note to the floor. Plant trees. Don't be litter bugs, said Jessica Finch. I wasn't littering, said Judy, picking up the note. She crossed out the Finch in Jessica's name and changed it to Jessica Fink. Sheesh, sometimes Jessica Fink Finch gave her the jitterbugs. Great, said Mr. Todd. These are all good ideas. Look around you, at home, in school, on the playground, not just in science class. How can we help the planet? How can we make the world around us a better place? We can each do our part. All it takes is one person to make a difference. One person? If all it took was one person, then she, Judy Moody, could save the world. She knew just where to start with a banana peel. On the way home from school that afternoon, Judy asked Rocky, Hey, can you come over and eat some bananas? Sure, said Rocky. What for? Compost, said Judy. I'll eat too, said Rocky. In Judy's kitchen, Judy and Rocky each ate one and a half bananas. They fed the fourth and last one to Mouse, Judy's cat. Then, Judy tossed all four banana peels into a bucket. Why don't we make a sign for the bucket that says, Turn garbage into dirt, said Rocky. Rare, said Judy. Tomorrow we can tell Mr. Todd how we started to heal the world. Double cool, said Rocky. Wait just a minute, said Judy. 
Why didn't I think of it before? Heal the world! That's it! What's it? My band-aid for the Crazy Strips Contest. You'll see. Judy ran upstairs and came back with markers and some paper. At the kitchen table, Rocky made a sign for the compost bucket while Judy drew a picture of Earth with a band-aid on it. She wrote, Heal the world under the globe in her best not in cursive letters. Then she drew banana peels all around the world. Stink came into the kitchen. What are you drawing? He asked Judy. Banana peels, said Judy. For the crazy strip contest, Rocky said. And you thought bats were weird, said Stink. Bats aren't half as crazy as banana peels. He looked at the empty bowl on the table. Hey, who ate the last banana? Mouse, said Judy. Judy and Rocky fell on the floor laughing. No way, said Stink. Just look at her whiskers, said Judy. Stink got down on the floor, face to face with the cat. Gross, Mouse has banana smush on her whiskers. Told you, said Judy. I'm telling mom you ate all the bananas, said Stink, and you fed one to Mouse. Tell her it's all in the name of science, said Judy. You'll see, from now on, there are going to be a few changes around here. We're making compost, said Rocky. See? He held up his sign. It takes like a hundred years to turn garbage into dirt, said Stink. Stink, you're going to be dirt unless you make like a tree and leave us alone. A Mr. Rubbish Mood It was still dark out when Judy woke up early the next morning. She found her flashlight and notebook. Then she tiptoed downstairs to the kitchen and started to save the world. She hoped she could save the world before breakfast. Judy wondered if other people making the world a better place had to do it quietly and in the dark so their parents would not wake up. She, Judy Moody, was in a Mr. Rubbish mood. Mr. Rubbish was the good garbage gremlin in Stink's comic book who built his house out of french fry cartons and pop bottles. He recycled everything, even lollipop sticks, and he never used anything from the rainforest. Hmm, things that came from the rainforest. That would be a good place to start. Rubber came from the rainforest, and chocolate and spices and things like perfume, even chewing gum. Judy collected stuff from around the house and piled it on the kitchen table. Chocolate bars, brownie mix, vanilla ice cream, her dad's coffee beans, the rubber toilet plunger, gum from Stink's gumball machine, her mom's lipstick from the bottom of her purse. She was so busy saving the rainforest that she didn't hear her family come into the kitchen. What in the world, mom said. Judy, why are you in the dark? Dad asked, turning on the lights. Hey, my gumball machine, Stink said. Judy held out her arms to block the way. We're not going to use this stuff anymore. It's all from the rainforest, she told them. Says who? asked Stink. Says Mr. Rubbish and Mr. Todd. They cut down way too many trees to grow coffee and give us makeup and chewing gum. Mr. Todd says the earth is our home. We have to take action to save it. We don't need all this stuff. I need gum, yelled Stink. Give me back my gum. Stink, don't yell. Haven't you ever heard of noise pollution? Is my coffee in there? Dad asked, rubbing his hair. Judy, is that ice cream? It's dripping all over the table. Mom carried the leaky carton over to the sink. Zzzz, zzzz. Judy made the sound of a chainsaw cutting down trees. She's batty, Stink said. Dad put the brownie mix back in the cupboard. Mom took the toilet plunger off the kitchen table and headed for the bathroom. Time for plan B. 
project, R-E-C-Y-C-L-E. -E. She, Judy Moody, would show her family just how much they hurt the planet. Every time someone threw something away, she would write it down. She got her notebook and looked in the trash can. She wrote down, one orange juice can, one inside of peanut butter jar lid, one plastic bread bag, four broken eggshells, smelly, yucky, wet coffee grounds, three paper muffin holders, two smushed scarlet o' cherry juice boxes and straws, half bowl of oatmeal. Stink, you shouldn't throw gooey old oatmeal in the trash, Judy said. Dad, tell her to quit spying on me. I'm a garbage detective, said Judy. Garbologist to you. Mr. Todd says if you want to learn what to recycle, you have to get to know your garbage. Here, said Stink, sticking something wet and mushy under Judy's nose. Get to know my apple core. Hardy har har, said Judy. Hasn't anybody in this family ever heard of the three R's? The three R's? asked Dad. Reuse, recycle. What's the third one? asked Stink. Refuse to talk to little brothers until they quit throwing stuff away. Mom, I'm not going to stop throwing stuff away just because Judy's having a trash attack. Look at all this stuff we throw away, Judy said. Did you know that one person throws away more than eight pounds of garbage a day? We recycle all our glass and cans, said mom. And newspapers, dad said. But what about this, said Judy, picking a plastic bag out of the trash. This bread bag could be a purse or carry a library book. What's so great about eggshells? asked Stink, and smelly old ground-up coffee. You can use them to feed plants or make compost. Just then, something in the trash caught her eye. A pile of popsicle sticks? Judy pulled it out. Hey, my Laura Ingalls Wilder log cabin I made in second grade. It looks like a glue museum to me, said Stink. I'm sorry, Judy. Mom said. I should have asked first, but we can't save everything, honey. Recycle it, said Stink. You could use it for kindling to start a fire or break it down into toothpicks. Not funny, Stink. Judy, you're not even ready for school yet. Let's talk about this later, said Dad. It's time to get dressed. It was no use. Nobody listened to her. Judy trudged upstairs feeling like a sloth without a tree. I won't wear lipstick today if it'll make you feel better, Mom called up the stairs. And I'll only drink half a cup of coffee, Dad said. But Judy could hardly hear him over the grinding of the rainforest coffee beans. Her family sure knew how to ruin a perfectly good Mr. Rubbish mood. She put on her jeans and her spotted owl t-shirt and to save water, she did not brush her teeth. She clomped downstairs in a mad at your whole family mood. Here's your lunch, said mom. Mom, it's in a paper bag. What's wrong with that? Stink asked. Don't you get it, said Judy. They cut down trees to make paper bags. Trees give shade. They help control global warming. We would die without trees. They make oxygen and help take dust and stuff out of the air. Dust, said Mom. Let's talk about cleaning your room if we're going to talk dust. Mom! How was she supposed to do important things like save trees if she couldn't even save her family tree? That did it. Judy went straight to the garage and dug out her Sleeping Beauty lunchbox from kindergarten. Are you really going to take that baby lunchbox on the bus where the whole world can see? Asked Stink. I'm riding my bike today, said Judy, to save energy. See you at school then. Stink waved his paper bag lunch at her. If only she could recycle her little brother. Go ahead, be a tree hater, called Judy. 
It's your funeral. Making the world a better place sure was complicated. Okay, third graders, I hope you enjoyed this section of Judy Moody Saves the World. Remember, if you want to read the whole story and find out how it ends, make sure to ask your teacher, librarian, or another adult if they might have a copy of the book for you. See you next time. Bye.